Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Tonight, John Whittingdale confirmed to this programme he had had a relationship with a woman who turned out, unbeknownst to him, to be a sex worker, a fact he discovered from a reporter. The details of that relationship went unpublished to the surprise of many. Maybe the newspapers never considered a story about the private lives of two consenting adults worth running. Or maybe there were more political reasons behind the decision to hold back. We may never know. But John Whittingdale, who was at the time head of the Culture Select Committee, now sits at the very top of a department whose job is to regulate newspapers. Indeed, he's currently overseeing a whole new regulatory framework under consideration in the wake of the Leveson inquiry. So has his position been compromised? And should he have told his bosses in Downing Street about what he knew they knew? Here's John Sweeney. Tonight, an extraordinary statement from Culture Secretary John Whittingdale, confirming a story that four of Britain's newspapers did not run. But he did have a relationship with a woman who turned out to be a dominatrix. But both he and Downing Street say it's nobody's business other than his own. John Whittingdale told Newsnight in a statement, between August 2013 and February 2014, I had a relationship with someone who I first met through Match.com. She was a similar age and lived close to me. At no time did she give me any indication of her real occupation, and I only discovered this when I was made aware that someone was trying to sell a story about me to tabloid newspapers. As soon as I discovered, I ended the relationship. This is an old story which was a bit embarrassing at the time, the events occurred long before I took up my present position and it has never had any influence on the decisions I have made as Culture Secretary. It's over three years since Lord Justice Leveson concluded that Britain's newspapers needed a tougher regulator. Culture Secretary John Whittingdale has made it perfectly plain he's not minded to give it all the teeth Lord Leveson wanted. But everything has just got a whole lot murkier with allegations both on the internet and today in private eye, but some of the newspapers have got something on the cabinet minister. The story first surfaced on byline.com that John Whittingdale in late 2013 had a relationship with a woman who was a prostitute. Whittingdale's office has told Newsnight he had no idea his girlfriend at the time was a sex worker at the London retreat, complete with its own dungeon. This is the street where the dungeon lies, but this isn't a story about an MP who became a cabinet minister and a dominatrix. It's a story about why the newspapers didn't run that story and why that might be. Inside the job that James Cusick was a reporter on the independent newspaper. He looked at the story for five months. There's, if you like, details of his private life which basically I think the public have a right to know about. If this individual is making these decisions, individual decisions that would affect the way people look at newspapers, the way newspapers behave, the way the BBC is allowed to behave, you have a right to know about this man's private life and whether there's something in it that he's trying to hold back from you. And that's what, was, that's what the Independent found out. In 2013, Mr Whittingdale and his girlfriend went to the MTV Awards in Amsterdam the trip was paid for by MTV. He didn't declare this trip with a parliamentary registry of interests because the cost of the trip, his office says, didn't meet the reporting threshold. But he did declare a similar trip to MTV awards he made with his then wife in 2006. Newsnight understands that four newspaper groups investigated the relationship between the MP and the dominatrix. The People, part of the Mirror Group, the Mail on Sunday, part of the Daily Mail group, The Sun, part of News International, and The Independent. All four newspapers spent time on the story, and all four newspapers didn't run the story. Some commentators, particularly amongst the hacked-off group, have called foul, saying the newspapers are hypocrites. But this may be unfair to editors who now more than ever are concerned about invading people's privacy. Whittingdale, after all, was a single man, 
having a relationship with a woman, a consenting adult. Tonight, number 10 told Newsnight that Mr. Whittingdale is a single man and his private life is his own affair. But tellingly, number 10 also said it was not aware of Whittingdale's relationship before he was appointed culture secretary. To be fair to Whittingdale, he's always been an advocate of light regulation of the newspapers, so there is no evidence he's done anything hypocritical. The question is, how much confidence can the public have in John Whittingdale, Secretary of State for Culture, the man in charge of the issue of whether the newspapers should be regulated or not, if they, the public, know those very same newspapers have got something on the man, John Whittingdale. The issue highlighted by Private Eye is one of fairness. The satirical magazine highlights two cases, that of the Tory MP Brooks Newmark and Labour peer Lord Sewell. Both of them had their sexual shenanigans splashed across the papers. Max Mosley faced shaming by the tabloid press after his sexual antics were laid bare and he got a bit of a kicking from John Whittingdale too. Well, it, it's quite funny. When, when I appeared in front of his committee back in 2009, he said vis-a-vis -vis my little story with the news of the world, you must have realised there's a time bomb that was going to go off. But of course, if I'd known that he had, uh, shall I say, similar interests, I would have said, well, aren't you in the same position? And surely you're more well-known than I am. I mean, in my case, it had absolutely nothing to do with what I was known for, which was working in the motor racing world. In his uh, world, of course, because he's so involved with the press, he does. But unfortunately, when he said that to me, I didn't know um, <laughs> what he was up to. And then there's the mail, arguing for full disclosure on the mystery celebrity who had a threesome. The mail asked, whatever happened to the public's right to know? Tonight, that seems a good question, not just in Fleet Street, but also in Westminster too. That was John Sweeney. Now, it's worth making clear that all the newspapers who decided not to run the Whittingdale story say they dropped it because they decided it was not a public interest story. It's also worth pointing out that many of those criticising Mr Whittingdale today have their own grievances against him. Some allies of Whittingdale point to the irony of privacy campaigners castigating newspapers for failing to invade the privacy of a politician. Now, one of Mr Whittingdale's critics is the shadow leader of the Commons, Chris Bryant. Tonight, he told us that the Culture Secretary was entitled to a private life, but he should have withdrawn from all regulation of the press, calling this a sword of Damocles over John Whittingdale. Well, joining us now to discuss this and more, Brian Cathcart, founder of Hacked Off, and Roy G Greenslade, professor of journalism at City University and a former editor of The Mirror. Warm welcome to both of you. Thanks for coming in. Um, do you think this compromises his position as culture secretary, first of all, Brian Cathcart? Yes, I'm afraid it does. The public can't have faith that this man has been acting. And remember, he's made very important decisions in relation to the press decisions they welcome wholeheartedly, enthusiastically. Um, the, the, the public can't have faith in his judgment, in his um, independence in making decisions about the media anymore. So you, from Hacked Off, the body that would like to see more privacy, is advocating, if you like, that this story should be out there for well, public discussion. I mean, it's not now, as John Sweeney said, it's not a story about John, Sweeney, John <laughs> Whittingdale's private life. It is a story about why the press did not cover this. And to suggest, in the very week when we see newspapers baying for the right to cover a story about a celebrity's private life, which a judge has told them they have no right to cover, that in that very week they would be um, uh, too uh, scrupulous, too high-minded to report a story about a cabinet minister, yeah which any judge in the country would tell them they have a right to uh, it. It's, right, just, it's just absurd. Right, Green said, why, why do you think the, the papers didn't pick this up? Do you think there was a sense of high-mindedness or do you think there wasn't public interest? Well, you've got to think when it happened. Um, it was not long after Leveson. Uh, they would all be very careful about whether or not they had a public interest justification. They would have all taken separate legal advice. They would have all looked at their code of practice. And I think it's a bit much to castigate newspapers for doing the right thing for once by deciding that this was a story about a man who was unmarried, 
who had a relationship with a woman who hadn't told him that she was a sex worker when they when he did know uh, he ended the relationship. I can't see that there was a genuine story there and clearly on the people and the mail on Sunday and the Sun uh, they felt the same way. Do you think that John Whittingdale did the right thing? He didn't tell his bosses at number 10 and he did accept um, the position of culture secretary. Uh, well, th uh, that's a separate matter. I think it might have been wise to have done that, although he probably thought um, this is a relationship which is over and past. He was then only the chairman of the select committee. He didn't have much power in that position. Um, when he did come to power, it was no longer a matter of amazing interest because it was over. But he so is, I think that's, in that's these surely circumstances, naive, we'd have to... That's surely naive, no, Roy. No, I no, mean, it's not, the, the man Look, has just quite, become a it's minister. Quite you are. It was you are absolutely. Wait, let me just say one Brian, time. You are. Roy Greensley, let me just put it to you like this. Do you think he's compromised now? Can he still yes. oversee regulation of the newspapers and implementation, if you like, of whatever is post Leveson? Oh, of course he can. I mean, I don't think this compromises him one whit. I mean, it's pure speculation that the newspapers have conspired to keep out this story. This is a competitive okay. industry. Just, yeah, this it was one once pure speculation wash. that newspapers hacked phones. Look, we have to be sceptical about this. This is a very murky world, as John Sweeney has said. The idea that um, the news, these newspapers are too scrupulous when he becomes culture secretary to tackle him on this is, is just, it's naive, I'm afraid. These Tackling papers wanted what, power Tackling over a what? minister, and they had power over a minister. You're, it, we don't know exactly, you're right, you how that played out. You'd but say, we do know that this same minister made three vital Go. decisions, all of which were incredibly helpful to the press, and actually not terribly in the interest of the public. OK, and Roy Green said, you think that's all just well, a, that's a conspiracy a, theory? A, that is a conspiracy theory. Look, look it, it's, quite, it's quite straightforward here. Newspapers have decided that they would try and get a story. They've investigated the story and discovered there isn't a story that they can justify publishing. That's not now, true. Off there are at least five public interest that. justifications for publishing this story. What and do you have think been should happen along. now? Brian Cathcart, briefly, because we're well, only at well, no, I, think, I think John Whittingdale... i, I tell you what I'd like no to happen now is John Whittingdale to get out of the way of the legislation passed by Parliament, passed by all parties in Parliament, Get out of the reform. way, meaning what? Step he down? He is blocking this legislation, which will give everybody in this country access to justice in libel and Last word, cases. Roy Greenslade. Well, no, it's quite simple, isn't it? He hasn't put that forward, but that's not his decision alone. This is a decision of the Cabinet and, most obviously, the Prime Minister. I can't think for one moment that John Whittingdale holds the fate of Britain's newspapers in his hands alone. That's just not on. OK. Thank you both very much indeed. Thank you.